Hello everyone and welcome to Theme Park Worldwide where it's time for a travel vlog. In this video we're going to be making our way here from London Heathrow Airport through to Basel in Switzerland. We're going to be starting the trip over at Europa Park. I love Europa Park in winter, it looks so nice. Then we're going to be getting the train down to Paris and going to Disneyland Paris. Oh, we're so excited to get back to both of these parks, two of our favourites in Europe. And it's been a while actually since we filmed a Europa Park travel vlog, so I thought we'd do an updated one because it's a bit more difficult to get to that park. Park, isn't it? We always have a lot of questions and messages asking how to get to Europa Park, so we always like to show you and keep it updated. Yeah, we're down here in Heathrow, just been with a few friends down here in London, uh, so we thought we'd fly out from down here in London um, out to Basel in Switzerland. We're actually flying out this evening, and then tonight we're actually going to be staying in Basel before getting the train uh, down to Europa Park um, in the morning. Of course, we're going to show you that journey and uh, then check into the Moxie Hotel, which is located um, right in Rust itself, uh, just a 10 minute walk from Europa Park. So you're actually flying out with British Airways tonight uh, with me. I always go for whatever's cheapest, whether it's Ryanair, EasyJet. Um, obviously, we're getting with the BA tonight. You can hear the planes now getting noisy tonight. Uh, and obviously, this flight was quite a bit cheaper as well. So it just worked out ideal for us. We've been doing some bits in London today, fly out tonight, and then stay over in Basel before getting the train um, down to Europa Park uh, in the morning. So uh, come and join us. Let's take you along for the adventure. And we're just here at Terminal 5, British Airways Terminal. Let's go. And here we are inside of Terminal 5. Yeah, it's huge in here. I do like T5. Got the Christmas decorations up over there as well, looking quite festive. Yeah, I thought it might be busier in here this evening with it being a lot closer to Christmas now, but it doesn't seem too busy at all, does it? No, I thought it was going to be absolutely packed. Like, I thought security, the queue would be huge, but we're literally going to be going straight through. Yeah, fantastic. You always like leaving plenty of time just in case, and you always should do when you travel. Um, but yeah, really not too busy at all tonight as well. So we'll head through security, and then we'll talk a little bit more about the trip. That was nice and easy getting through security. There was no queues at all, which was fantastic. So we got plenty of time for a nice weather spoons. Gone for fish, chips and peas just here. Yeah, it was 16 pound. Obviously you always pay a lot more, don't you, in airports. Um, but yeah, that looks nice, that does. Quite a lot of chips just there as well. That looks really nice, that does. I have also had the same, but I have had mushy peas with mine. I'm just waiting <laughs> for mine to come. So yeah, we just thought we'd get this. We've got a few supplies from Boots as well to take with us. And then we'll have like an hour or so until the gate opens. Yeah, ideal really. Not too bad at all. Yeah, that looks uh, delicious, Look that does. That. Oh, you can't go wrong with a good weather spoon. Delicious fish and chips there to start the trip. And yeah, it's lovely and festive here in Heathrow Terminal 5. Got the Christmas decorations, the lovely tree just here. And just went to the toilet and it was playing the 12 days of Christmas. Very festive <laughs> whilst I was in there. But uh, yeah, it's always a nice time of the year to travel actually um, at Christmas. Obviously, it can get really busy as you start to get towards the main event itself and Christmas Day and all that travel period. Uh, but like in the run up, it's really nice. And you get like all the extra decorations in the airport and uh, like in the shops as well, which is really nice. Uh, so anyway, we're going to be uh, getting our gate information shortly, flying with BA. Probably going to be about a 90 minute flight, maybe a little bit less than that, um, through to Basel tonight in Switzerland. Now, the airport's actually located on the border uh, between Switzerland and France and it's got like two exits uh, one into France one into Switzerland we're going out of the Swiss exit tonight uh, and then we're gonna go straight on a bus which only takes about 15 minutes uh, you can buy your ticket there at the machine and that takes you straight into the center of Basel uh, and then when we get to there obviously we're gonna be staying over tonight in a hotel uh, mainly because we're coming in late uh, the trains didn't run down towards Ringsheim and Europa Park uh, that late on an evening uh, but normally you get that bus straight down uh, to the center of Basel Basel, which brings you outside the train station and then you get the train from there um, down to Ringsheim Europa Park uh, which is the official name for the stop but obviously because we're coming in late tonight we're going to be staying um, down in Basel itself uh, and then in the morning we'll carry on with the journey and uh, head down on the train uh, and I'll talk a little bit about that later on in the travel vlog but uh, yeah nice and easy I uh, just wanted to kind of give you a bit of an updated travel vlog because we do get so many questions about it and obviously it's not as easy as just uh, jumping on a flight and then a quick like 10 minute ride in a taxi you know to the park uh, there's a little bit more to, to it and a lot more to think about um, but I think that adds to it in a way because when you get there uh, it just feels even more special it's like yes you've accomplished something uh, I've been doing this journey for over 10 years now it's lovely and easy and you've got quite a few different options that you can do as well if you didn't want to do this 
Expressway. Uh, there's other airports you can fly into, depending on the time of year. Uh, but bear in mind, at this time of year, it can be quite limited uh, with the flights and the airports um, that are doing flights from the UK um, round to the Europa Park area. But uh, yeah, we'll get our gate information shortly. We've got a nice BA flight tonight. It's weird because normally we're flying out with either EasyJet or Ryanair uh, when we do Europe stuff. Uh, but yeah, EasyJet tonight. Uh, BA, sorry, tonight. And that's because it's uh, nice and easy. There we go. I'm literally that used to going with EasyJet or Ryanair. Um, BA flight tonight. Um, and that's going to be taking us through to Basel. So yeah, nice and easy. Always oh, ruined about. I think he might have missed his flight. <laughs> Always getting funny of early. in the air they're now here on our British Airways flight and some great views even though it was a bit of a rainy takeoff it was lovely seeing all the Christmas lights over London and you realise how many people put all Christmas lights on the outside of the house um, because there was loads like it looked amazing tried to get a few shots on camera as we took off uh, but it didn't come up the best with it being a bit uh, rainy uh, on the windows but still like yeah it was really pretty um, seeing all of the lovely lights and yeah it's only a one hour ten minute flight so a little bit shorter uh, than expected too and uh, yeah even though a short flight that has been around gave us some water complimentary arrogate spring water and also as it's christmas we've got a nice little uh, gingerbread man just here as well how nice is that <laughs> how nice are they as well they're smiling because they know they're going to europa bar well they're going to be in my belly by then uh, so i'm going to eat these now lovely there we go little gingerbread man love that not used to that luxury on ryanair and easy jet Some more lovely views there as we're coming into land here into Switzerland. One hour, ten minute flight. Nice short flight there on BA, and a nice little surprise as well with the gingerbread man. I can't it? believe we got Ooh. not one but three gingerbread men. There was absolutely lovely. I thought there was only going to be one at first when they opened the packet. Well, when I felt around in the bag, I was like, "There's definitely more than one in here." Fantastic, but no, it was a great flight. Nice and smooth. Some good views as well. With it being night, I love a good light night flight like that. Taking off and landing uh, in the dark, I think it's great. Got our passports ready, so we're going to uh, yeah just get them checked and then we'll be straight out. Like I say, there's two exits at this airport. You've got the French side and the Swiss side. We need to make sure we're going out of the Swiss side uh, when we leave the airport just here. But yeah, nice and easy to remember that. And it's well signposted down here as well. You go through like the normal passport area, then it kind of splits off after that. Oh, perfect tonight. No queue at all for passports. We were straight through. There's the French exit just over there. It says exit France. And you got the Swiss exit just here. So yeah, that's what you want to bear in mind that there's two exits. Make sure you go out the right one. It's just a lot easier like that. And there we go, straight out of the exit. We're now just following the signs 
for the bus. Yeah, it's to the right hand side when you come out of the Swiss exit. And there's normally the bus stop, literally straight out here. And then you can buy a ticket for the bus on the machine, which is nice and easy. I think that door's out of action, isn't it? Got to go through this one. Yeah, just showing you how easy it is, really. Now this way. Oh, it's chilly, isn't it? Obviously, that's why they've uh, shut the door on that side, I think, just to keep the warm in a bit better. Normally, you just come straight out to the right. And there we go. How easy is that? So you come straight through. And this is where you get the bus. According to that, there's one pulling in now. There's another one in 11 minutes. Yeah, they're quite often, even though we've come in in the evening now, it's like 10.30. Um, yeah, there we go. Lots of different buses. It takes to Barnoff SBB, which is basically right in the centre of Basel. And it's bus number 50. Charlotte's so straight on the machine. You pay cash or card just over here. Yeah, nice and easy. Yeah, just to the uh, to the Barnhof, just there. That one on the left-hand side. One. Yeah, that's it. Nice and easy. What is it? Uh, 420 Swiss francs. So yeah, you can use cash or card just here. And that's right outside of Euro Airport, Basel, Mulhouse, Freiburg. Yeah, so let's you straight out to the right-hand side. Look for the sign here, 50. And yeah, it's been the same for uh, many years, this has. And uh, right here, fantastic. Oh, nice and efficient there, getting the tickets near the eye, you get a nice printed ticket. Yeah, it was 660, I thought it was less than that, but yeah, 660, that was been for a child uh, ticket just there. Obviously, it tells you on there where we're going to the Barnhof SBB. Well, remember, this journey only normally takes about 15 minutes or so. Uh, I can't see there really being any traffic at this time of night either. We have come out here before and there's been a bit of a queue to buy tickets, um, but yeah, like no queue at all tonight, and you have got a couple of machines there. Uh, which is ideal and obviously this is going to take us right down into the centre of Basel uh, and then obviously we're going to be staying there for the night in the uh, hotel before carrying on on the train in the morning. That was but really quick that was, I think we might have missed the bus before but there's eight minutes till the next one so not too bad. Even at this time of night they're still pretty regular yeah, aren't it's they? It's easy on the machine as well, like, brilliant. Yeah, nice and, uh, and easy, I mean you can get a taxi if you wanted to from here but um, I think when the bus is pretty cheap um, it's better doing that. I mean, maybe if you're coming in a bigger group, then a taxi yeah. could work out a cheaper option for you. Um, but yeah, it's not too far down into the city centre. So yeah, we'll let us wait for the bus to arrive. Oh yeah, eight minutes, and then the bus will be here. Nice and chilly, it's gonna be very festive down at Europa Park. Can't wait to get there. And that's another main reason for flying out tonight instead of just staying down in London. We thought we may as well fly out this evening because it means we can get to the park for opening tomorrow. And you know me, I like to maximise the days. Uh, so we're getting the train early in the morning and then we'll be down in Rust, um, down by Europa Park, ready for uh, park opening tomorrow, which is 11 o'clock. Uh, obviously it's nine o'clock during the main season, but 11 o'clock uh, during the winter periods. So yeah, it's ideal really. I quite like the hours of 11, seven, uh, with possible extended hours as well, um, through to eight or maybe even later. Um, but yeah, seven o'clock is like the, the minimum that it's open till um, during Christmas. So yeah, 11 seven's perfect because you get a good guaranteed three hours of night rides. And I can't wait to get some night rides on the new coaster for this year. Voltron, really excited to get back on it. Obviously we was here um, for the opening back in April and uh, yeah, excited to get back on Voltron, give it some different test rides in different seats and uh, also some night rides as well, which will be awesome. And just a couple of minutes after we ended that previous clip, the bus is pulling in here. Yeah, it's one of them nice stretchy buses. Yeah, there's lots of room on here. It's what you're looking out for if you are making this journey in the future. Number 50, let's go and get on. Plenty of room for everyone. And it's got luggage storage as well. And just on the bus, yeah, it's about a 15 minute journey in total. It's got the screens just up there as well, which list the stops. Here is the last stop for the train station, right in the center of Basel as well, so you haven't got to worry about like pressing the button or anything like that, it's going to stop no matter what when it gets down to the final stop and that's where we're staying tonight. And there we go, nice and easy, you get off the bus just there and it literally drops you off right outside the train station which is this big beautiful building here, obviously we don't need to go inside the train station tonight now uh, because we're staying uh, down here this evening in a hotel just around the corner. Uh, but yeah, when you go back to the airport as well if you're doing this journey, uh, it gives you the times just up there and you buy your tickets from that machine and literally you take a right turn and you're straight into the train station, which is just there. Like we're actually staying in a hotel, which is just around the corner, up this way to the left hand side. I think it's literally just round on the left up there. And yeah, it just worked out ideal with the flight times, with us already been in London anyway. And I thought, let's get over here tonight. There was no point in booking another night in London. I thought we may as well come and stay here. Then it means in the morning we're straight on the train and we get a nice full day at Europa Park. Oh, and this is perfect tonight. Train station literally around that corner. Starbucks were out right there and this is where we're staying this evening in the Hotel Metropole. Yeah, this was about 60 quid for the night. Yeah, it's ideal. So if you are doing a similar thing to us and getting the uh, uh, a later flight in, 
then you can come and uh, stay in here. Ideal, I've already checked in and everything online, so it should be nice and easy. Got some bright lights out the front. And we're all checked into the hotel. It has got its own reception, but after 10.30, that reception closes. So you kind of go to the hotel next door um, and it's like three hotels are all connected with internal corridors and they share like one reception. Oh, uh, that was fine. It did tell me on an email, uh, but yeah, we got around there and uh, straight up to our room. Yeah, it's quite nice in here. Nice and warm and cozy because it's cold outside. Like, I thought it was cold back home, but yeah, it's getting chilly, isn't it now? It is. I can't wait to get in bed. I feel like it's been a long day today. Yeah, well, we've had a full day in London, haven't we, as well, we doing have. stuff. So. It's been really good, though. I've really enjoyed it, but I'm looking forward to having a sleep ready for your over tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> that's the thing. We'll make the most of it. We've yeah, got a nice desk area just over there. Uh, the bed looks lovely. I'm really excited to jump into that in just a minute. Socks are coming off. Hey, some nice pictures. And if you do want to do a bit of sightseeing around Basel, you have got the zoo um, around here. I've never been before. Before, but I'd like to at some point in the future and the city is just really nice bear in mind obviously Switzerland is very expensive um, so if you are coming here it is one of the most expensive places I've ever been to so bear that in mind uh, there's a Burger King and a McDonald's just around the corner uh, and I've been to both of them before and for a meal it was about 16 17 pounds for something you pay like seven quid eight quid for back home you know so Switzerland can be expensive um, but it's really nice people are friendly around here there's a beautiful church which is so nice nearby and uh, also at this time of year they do have the Christmas markets as well um, which you can go and see but uh, yeah obviously stopping here for the night it's weird for us because normally we do continue all the way down to Rust, don't we? And, and, you know, in one go. It's weird stopping over. Don't mind me. I'm just chugging my water back. <laughs> Why not? But it's one of them where it's like because we've come in so late. Yeah, it's and ideal. And we didn't want to waste a day. So we're here. Yeah, it's, it's, it's worked out good actually because it means we, we, we also know we've got our bus, uh, our train in the, in the morning. We haven't got to get a bus or anything like that. The station's literally right, right there. there. So ideal. Good night. And we'll see you all in the morning where we'll Bye, continue uh, down into Germany. That's it. Charlotte's Bye. off. She's sleeping in the bath. <laughs> See you in the morning. Well, good morning from Basel here in Switzerland where it is freezing cold this morning. Yeah, we're up nice and early, as you can see with the clock up there on the train station. It's nearly quarter past seven. Our train's at 7.37, uh, but we were spotting to make sure we had enough time, didn't we, make sure everything's all right. The funniest part is my alarm only went off at seven o'clock, and look how quick <laughs> I've got ready. <laughs> like, you are a star at getting ready, Charlotte. It does I'm not take so you long. Fast. Out of bed, get ready. Get hey, y'all had the number 50 bus coming in again this morning. Fantastic. So, yeah, cool. we uh, are yeah, making our way around now from the hotel into the train station here, Basel SBB. And yeah, there's a nice picture on the wall that I want to show you inside here before we uh, get on the train, because it relates to something that we did earlier this year. Oh, look at this inside the train station. Beautiful, all decorated for Christmas. This massive, like, chandelier hanging up. That is huge as well. Here you've got uh, lots of different pictures of Switzerland on the walls. But this one up here is pretty special, because that's Zermatt. So and the Matterhorn just there. And obviously we visited there earlier this year on a trip. And yeah, we had a little walk around that beautiful town. I got some views of the Matterhorn. Unfortunately, it was quite a cloudy day when we went to Zermatt. But uh, there you go, it was really nice. We saw like all the little wooden buildings and everything. And yeah, it was a lovely place. I'd like to see a lot more of Switzerland, but I'm glad that I ticked off that uh, bucket list because it was really nice there, wasn't it? A lovely yeah, it was place. it lovely. Nice little cute town. Gosh, busy in here, isn't it? Yeah, it is busy this morning. Everyone's up with the morning commute here in Basel. Right then, I'm just going to have a little look over at the board. It's at uh, 7.37, but I can see four trains, I think, that leave at that time. So we want to make sure we get on the right one. Uh, they've all got numbers um, and also platforms as well. Yeah, platform one, that's what we uh, we want. Now, of course, depending on what time of day you get in the train, you can either get direct um, or you can transfer. Uh, I believe this one is going to be direct um, all the way through um, to Ringsign Europa Park, according to what I've got on the app. Um, which should be fantastic. I've already bought the tickets online um, through the Deutsche Bahn website, DB. I'd recommend booking your tickets online, uh, but also you can get like a flexible ticket as well, which is a couple of euros more, but that means that, you know, if you are coming in and your flight's delayed, you're not committed to getting that exact same train. Obviously for us, we knew we could make this one definitely this morning um, because we were flew in last night. Um, but yeah, you can get like a flexible ticket or if you wanted to, you could just buy them here from the machine. But I do recommend buying tickets online in advance. It normally works out better. We are at RE7 at 7.37 to Offenburg via Basel Bad, which is the other main train station in Basel um, from Platform 1. So yeah, easy enough, really. We could have had another 20 minutes in bed, but it's always best, uh, you know, making sure you're on time. It's actually quite calm now we're inside the station. It was busy outside. Here we go. Oh, I'll tell you what, it is fresh this morning. It's going to be cold on these rides. Luckily, though, I've got plenty of layers and my hat and gloves. 
And yeah, here on platform one, and we're going to be again in the direction of Offenburg. But yeah, according to everything I've got, this should be a direct train. But if not, we can change if we need to. But yeah, it can vary depending on what time um, you're coming in. Sometimes you may need to change in Offenburg, uh, which is normally the station where you change over in. Uh, but I think we're going to be going all the way down to Ringsheim Europa Park. The station used to just be called Ringsheim, but it's officially Ringsheim Europa Park now. And so they're all there waving at you when you get there. Yeah, so <laughs> it's, it's a lot easier now that they have changed the name of the station, uh, which is great. All right, let's go and just wait for the train. They've got a little uh, indoor area, so we'll just chill out over here. Yeah, it's got a list of the stations on there as well. And the train just pulled in. It was full, just loads of people coming off. But uh, yeah, luckily, not many people waiting on the platform now. And plenty of room with it being a double decker just here as well. Fantastic, right? Let's go and get on the train. Here we go then, plenty of seats on the train, which is good. Loads of room, probably because it's nice and quiet this morning. But well, to be honest, when we've done this route before, we never normally struggle for a seat, do we, we really? We always get a seat on here, which is nice. It's nice and warm in here. Well. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's going to be fresh this trip, but that's what makes it, isn't it? Going to parks when it's really cold, especially when it's so Christmassy. It does add to it. You never know. We might even get some snow at some point. We'll see. Uh, now they've got screens on the train as well, so you can like follow your journey um, just on there too. Uh, it's worth bearing in mind it doesn't actually list every single stop um, on the station screen, but I think it should do here on the train screen. But uh, what I definitely recommend as well is having Google Maps downloaded, and you can click on the station, and then you can see like a full list of all the different stops. Uh, I think Google Maps is great for that. It's a really good feature. Uh, so let's just click on the name of the station, then it gives you like the live train times and it keeps you updated as well if there's any delays uh, or anything like that as well. So yeah, it's definitely worth uh, doing that little top tip whilst you're traveling. And yeah, we'll get a bit of footage along the way. Should be starting to go light soon. Oh, I'll tell you what, it looks really chilly out there. It's minus two outside. I'm glad that we've got our hats and gloves. We're just here at Freiburg station now. And yeah, as I mentioned earlier, this is a direct train this morning, uh, but sometimes you may need to change at Freiburg uh, when you're coming in from Basel. But yeah, it's nice and easy. And of course, it'll tell you on your ticket what you need to do. But yeah, it's always worth just checking in advance, just so you know. But so yeah, this is one of the stations where um, you will have to change um, if you haven't got a direct train. But obviously we're on a direct one this morning. McAdee is just there as well. <laughs> I'll get a little bit more footage and yeah about half an hour we should be there And here we go, we just pulled in at Ringsheim Europa Park. Hey, a nice journey just there. <laughs> it is cold. We're going to be saying that a lot, I think, the next few days. But still, it adds to the festive atmosphere. Yeah, we just come in here on platform two, and then you just need to go under the subway to the bus stop, which is over there. And you're coming in this direction. Yeah, if you come around here, take a left, and you've got the little subway that runs underneath. That'll take us round to the bus stop. Well, yeah, nice uh, train journey. And that was really nice and quick this morning as well. With it being a direct service, with us being here early, yeah, it was one hour and 15 minutes, like direct all the way down, which is fantastic. And just before we got on the bus, in terms of the return journey to Basel, obviously it would go from platform one which is on this side here. So yeah, when you're going back uh, towards Basel, you wouldn't need to go under the subway. But yeah, there's only two platforms here, so it's nice and easy to navigate. And the bus stop is literally right here. You can just see Ed Euromouse up there, mascot for the park. And Snorri, the mascot for Rulantica, the water park there as well. And yeah, you've got this nice uh, little bus stop just over here. And of course, it's got all the times on the screen there um, for the buses. And there we go, you've got all the bus times just on there as well. It's the 7231 that you want to be getting. And yeah, it only takes about 10 minutes. Worth pointing out, this bus is cash only um, if you are getting this. But you can actually book your train ticket all the way through, uh, which does include um, the bus as well. If you uh, book your train ticket through to Europa Park. So yeah, bear that in mind. You can do that as well. Yeah, there's a look 
all the time. As you can see, they are pretty regular, actually. I feel like they've become a lot more me regular than they uh, used to be. Just on there. So, yeah, we've only got a few minutes to go until the bus. Hey, we've only been waiting a few minutes, and here is the bus, the 7231 to Europa Park. Hey, love how they've got the actual old train from Eurosat up there as well. So if you are buying your bus ticket actually here on the bus itself, it's three euros ten per person at the time of recording. And yeah, it takes less than 10 minutes and there's a few different stops that you can get off depending on where you're going to be staying down at Europa Park. Obviously we're staying this time in Rust, in the Moxie Hotel. We stayed there a few times now and it's great. So yeah, we're going to be uh, getting off down by the hotels just there. But you've got a uh, stop by the hotels uh, and then also down by the entrance to the theme park itself as well. Love all the frost on the trees there. It looks extra pretty, doesn't it? And this park at Christmas, I don't think there's a more Christmassy feeling than being at Europa Park. Like the amount of decorations and everything here is just so special, it really is. So we can't wait to show you it all. There is also a stop down here at Hotel Kronosar and Rulantica, which is the water park as well. So if you're going straight to the water park, um, upon arrival, you can get off here. And also if you're staying at Hotel Kronosar, because obviously these two things are located a little bit further away from the rest of the resort. Oh, it looks so festive out there. And we've arrived here into Rust, Germany home of Europa Park. So yeah, you've got various different bus stops around here and obviously you can get off whichever's closest to your accommodation we're staying on right until near the end which will drop us off down by the hotel resort for Europa Park and that's also where the Moxie Rust Hotel is as well. Yeah you've got loads of like little guest houses and B&Bs, stayed in loads of these over the years. In the Just over 10 years now I've been coming here to Europa Park beautiful little town and we've just got off the bus right here at Europa Park Hotel Resort so yeah nice and easy for getting the bus back from here as well you can get like all the times just on here and obviously Google Maps again is great for looking at live bus times what's like live train times fantastic and already you're straight into winter wonderland we're only at the bus stop and look at all the lights everywhere so pretty yeah nice and easy 10 minute ride on the bus oh, that was really quick yeah, it's one of them that, you know, you have got to put a bit more thought into getting to Europa Park, but it is worth it. After a short five minute stroll from the hotel resort bus station, we've made it here to Moxie Hotels. This opened a few years ago uh, and we've stayed in this quite a few times now. It's a really nice hotel, very close to the park. It takes about a 10 minute walk uh, down to the main entrance. 15 minutes if you're going a bit slower, but if you're having a nice pace, about 10 minutes. Uh, but also if you're going to the Europa Park hotels on an evening, uh, which of course are open to everyone to enjoy and go and enjoy the bars and have drinks and things, they're literally um, right over the road. Two minute walk, which is fantastic. So we made our way then inside the reception and obviously it's early on in the morning so we can't check into our room until later on but they have got a free locker service which is really easy to use wasn't it? Yeah that was excellent, you just put your bag in, put a four digit code in then we can just pick our bags up later, it saves carrying them around all day. Yeah it's a nice secure uh, locker facility as well, I know some places you just kind of leave them in like a locker room don't you at the side uh, but yeah with this you get like your own locker which is, which is fantastic so we'll continue on with this video a little bit later on, we're going to go and enjoy the park for the day and then we'll give you a bit of a tour around of the Moxie Hotel here in Rust this evening so we'll see you later and it's a little bit later on now and we're all checked in here at Moxie Rust it's a very modern hotel it's been here for a few years and it's really nice actually like the design of it and it just feels very homely oh, but modern as well which is really good let's uh, knock on see if there's anybody in Hello. <laughs> hey here she is all oh, just poking your head around the corner just there Come on. Oh, it's quite mysterious how you open the, uh, quite a heavy door, the door. <laughs> here we go. We have also been to Lidl and got stocks up over here. We got uh, these like knockoff Capri Suns. Beautiful. Look at all the ranch fruits in there. They're really good. And uh, also got some big bottles of water and some muffins and stuff. Because the thing is, when you're taking water and that in, like you save quite a bit of money, don't you, really? Like taking in your own drinks. You so. do, because it can add up. So at least if you've got a big one of them, you haven't got to worry about buying drinks throughout the day, so which is good. It's over four euros for a, a fizzy drink. Yeah, isn't it's it like so 425 which is yeah. quite a lot really and those waters i think there was like 99 cents each they're not that bad really at all yeah it's better for you isn't it drinking water it's than uh, all like the fizzes fruits they're very nice lovely 
know, but uh, here we go then. So we're at Moxie Rust. I think we have shown it in a vlog before, but I just wanted to get it in again and show you. It's a really nice hotel to stay at um, because literally it takes 10 minutes uh, walk to the main entrance of the park, 15 if you want to take it a bit slower. Uh, but then you walk through Rust, you've got like the pizzeria and all the other restaurants and things as well nearby. Uh, if you like, uh, is it a Japanese restaurant? I think I it think is. You see the Japanese, I think they do a bit of Chinese food in there as well, but it's always so busy. That's just around the corner. And then most importantly, you got the hotel bars, uh, which are literally, you walk across from here, you're at Bell Rock, which is ideal. Uh, here we go, I woke up like this. Hey, <laughs> yeah, he's looking at the nice double bed. Uh, beds are really comfy in here, which is nice. It's quite funny because you, instead of like a normal headrest, they have these like over at the back. Um, but you got plugs on either side of the bed. Don't forget your travel adapters though, if you are coming over. Um, and then you've got like that weird little seating area yeah. off to the side there where you can just kind of chill out mm -hmm. um, next to the bed. More plug sockets, nice big TV, huge. which is good. Some good lighting in here as well, like ambience, which is nice. Like on an evening, you don't have to have a big light on. Um, what's a really cool feature is at night, isn't it? If you get out to go to the toilet or something. Yeah, so as soon as you take your feet out of the bed, a small light comes on. Nothing to wake you up, but it's easier for when you go into the toilet, which is great. To save time to mess about, turning light switches on. So that's quite handy. Uh, the one floor with the rooms in here, and we've said this, you know, for a while now when we've been staying, is there's not really much storage. Like, they don't have, like, a big wardrobe area. Literally, you just got that to hang your clothes. I think I would have designed this a bit different here myself. I would have had, like, a wardrobe and then the desk going across. Obviously, this has got a connecting door. Um, but, yeah, like, other than that, it's, a, it's really nice. But, yeah, I just would have liked a bit more room just over here, really. There's not enough space, is there? No, there's not. Like, that's why we just kind of put the clothes on that little seating bit. Um, and then you got the shower, which is really nice, really powerful shower um, just in there too. You got a light up mirror, which is lovely. And then the basin area, again, it's not got loads of room in there, uh, but it's fine. You don't want two of you to be going in there at once. I think they have got family rooms here though as well. Well, that does bring us to the end of this travel vlog. Hope it's made it a little bit easier for you if you are planning a trip out to Europa Park, uh, whether you're coming in the summer, Halloween, or Christmas like we have, uh, you can always follow that route. It does make it a bit easier because it can be quite complicated, can't it? It can. It's good when you've got a guide to know this is what you've got to do because Europa Park is so worth visiting. So if you are looking at visiting, this is the best option that we've found. Yeah, don't be put off with the public transport options. Obviously, there's other things that you can do. There's other places you can fly into. Uh, Strasbourg, we've We've done uh, Barden Airport before as well. Um, so yeah, you know, you've got other options out there. We've drove down to here. You know, you can hire a car from the airport. Obviously, if you're not confident with public transport, but don't mind driving, that's a good option too, hiring a car from the airport. But I recommend if you're hiring it from Basel, hire it from the French side, not the Swiss side, because you'll save a few pounds there. It's quite cheaper. Sean's top tips. Um, but uh, now I hope that you've uh, enjoyed the vlog. It's been a bit different for us this time because obviously we stayed over in Basel. Well, that's worked out better because it's meant that we've had like a a full day today at the park um, instead of having to you know get do the, do the transport in the morning and get half a day we've maximized our time and of course we've got two action pack vlogs on the way Yay! i love europa park at christmas so i cannot wait to see it again you've only been here what once at christmas before yeah, i've only been once and it was just so magical like there were so many lights so many trees it was lovely and we've got lots to experience really excited to get back on voltron nevera as well see how that's riding now it's been quite a few months since it opened i'm um, so excited for that well i've on ride povs because they're allowed here and so much more uh, but as always merry christmas everyone thanks so much for watching and that leaves me one final thing to say get, get out there and keep on riding. riding we'll see you in the next vlog